Hello my dear subscribers. I'm pleased to welcome you to my YouTube channel dedicated to author stories. Enjoy listening. Jenny was always strong, very strong. So much so that when her pregnant husband left her, she never cried once. She just gritted her teeth and kept on living. When Sandra was born, all Jenny had to her name was a room in a communal apartment and an old stroller that her neighbors gave her. But Jenny didn't give up. She took Sandra with her and cleaned all the stairwells in the area. Somehow, they managed to survive until Sandra was able to get into daycare and Jenny was able to find a job. Life started to get better. Not that they immediately became independent people, but things got easier. Sandra grew up to be a good, obedient girl. Jenny couldn't be happier with her. Sandra was so independent that even in elementary school, she not only did her homework on her own, but also prepared something simple for her mom when she came home from work. And when Jenny went to sixth grade, their communal neighbor, Grandma Frida, passed away. As far as Jenny could remember, Grandma Frida had always been an old lady. Nobody knew exactly how old she was. It seemed that Frida herself didn't know. But she was a kind grandmother who always looked after Sandra. The room became available and soon a loud woman moved in. Life in the communal apartment turned into hell from day one. Lara, as this aunt was called, was dissatisfied with everything and everyone. She didn't like Jenny, she didn't like Sandra. She always imposed her own rules in the kitchen. And if Jenny didn't have time to wash the dishes before work, there would be a grand scandal in the evening. Once, Jenny and Sandra overslept a little, either the alarm didn't ring or Jenny didn't hear it. She jumped up half an hour until work. She quickly fed Sandra, there was no time for dishes, and they ran out. In the evening, they expected the new neighbor to greet them at the door, as she usually did when she wanted to start a fight. But it was quiet at home. Jenny and Sandra went to the kitchen, their plates, and most importantly, Sandra's favorite mug with cartoon characters, were missing. The girl had been saving up for this mug for almost half a year. Jenny didn't understand where the dishes had gone. And then she saw they were in the trash can. Moreover, they were thrown with such force that they all broke. Sandra was crying, feeling sorry for her mug. She couldn't hold back her tears. Jenny sat down on the floor in front of her daughter and said, Sandra, sweetie, don't cry. I'll come after work tomorrow and buy you the exact same mug. Do you promise? Sandra asked. Of course, I promise, Jenny replied. Sandra calmed down a bit and went to her room while Jenny stood in the middle of the kitchen and thought it was time to start a war because this neighbor would keep causing trouble for them. Jenny didn't think for long. She grabbed some cups from the neighbor's table and threw them in the trash can. Then she took the salt shaker, unscrewed the lid, and poured all of it into the neighbor's soup, which was on the stove. Feeling a sense of duty fulfilled, she went to her room. About an hour later, screams could be heard from the kitchen. Jenny was lying in bed and enjoying listening to the neighbor calling her all sorts of names. Strangely enough, the neighbor didn't come to her. Apparently, she went to prepare for the next round of the war. A week passed peacefully, but then the neighbor attacked Sandra. Jenny came home late that day and found her daughter in tears. Sandra, what happened? She asked. It turned out that Sandra was running from the kitchen to her room and didn't notice the neighbor, and they collided. The neighbor grabbed Sandra by the ear and twisted it so hard that it was all bruised. Jenny couldn't tolerate it. She decisively walked into the neighbor's room, pushed the door open, and said, Didn't anyone teach you manners? Get out of my room. The neighbor stepped back to the window. Jenny walked around the table, grabbed the neighbor by the throat and squeezed slightly. If you even lay a hand on my daughter or raise your voice at her again, I will strangle you. Do you understand me? The neighbor nodded and tried to pry Jenny's hands off her throat. 
Jenny let go and left the room. From that day on, an eerie silence settled in the apartment. Jenny thought the neighbor had calmed down, but it turned out to be much worse. About a month passed. Sandra was supposed to finish fourth grade in two weeks, and Jenny got a voucher for Sandra to attend camp while she worked. Sandra was happy since she had never been to camp before, and summer was boring with Jenny constantly at work and nobody in the courtyard as everyone had gone away for the season. At camp, Sandra would get to be with other kids in nature for an entire month. One day, the doorbell rang and Jenny went to open it. Two unknown women and two men stood on her doorstep. One of the men was in uniform and Jenny raised her eyebrows in surprise. Mrs. Jenny? Yes? Then we're here for you. Jenny opened the door wider, not understanding who they were or what they wanted. They all entered her room. Sandra was playing on the couch. Seeing the strangers, she ran up to her mother and hid behind her. So, the child is intimidated and the living conditions are below average. Who are you and what do you want? We've received multiple reports that you're not raising your daughter properly. You're never home, you have money problems, and you're very aggressive, attacking your neighbors and threatening to kill them. A pile of statements was placed in front of Jenny. We cannot leave these signals unchecked. While the investigation is ongoing, your daughter will stay in a shelter. After the investigation, we will decide whether to return her to you or terminate your parental rights. Jenny's blood ran cold with fear. I won't give you my daughter. No one will ask for your permission. One of the men took Sandra and dragged her to the hallway, where another woman was already standing with Sandra's jacket in her hand. Mom, Mommy, don't give me away. Mommy, I don't want to go. Sandra cried loudly, choking on her sobs. Jenny lunged towards her, but the second man held her firmly. Jenny struggled, kicked the man, screamed, and begged. But soon Sandra's cries became inaudible, they took her to the entrance. The man let go of Jenny and said, if you move again, I'll write it in the protocol and you won't see your child anymore. He left and Jenny lay on the floor. She cried, she screamed, she bit the floor. She couldn't protect her daughter. And Jenny knew who was to blame. The woman wiped away her tears, stood up, took the poker from the stove, and went to her neighbor's house. Jenny was released from prison after seven years. For all seven years, she knew that as soon as she got out, she would only focus on one thing, finding Sandra. But things didn't go as planned for Jenny. Her room was taken, and other people had been living there for a long time. They knew her story from the neighbor and had kept almost all of Jenny and Sandra's belongings. So Jenny asked to stay with a distant relative without much hope as she was her aunt but not a blood relative. Jenny had never really talked to her before and when she arrived, she was surprised. Her aunt invited her into the house and even set the table. The aunt was already quite elderly and asked Jenny what had brought her there only after Jenny had finished eating. And Jenny decided not to hide anything. She told her everything about Sandra, the neighbor, the prison, and losing her home. The aunt was silent for a while and then spoke up. Yes, life has given you a rough time. I never thought something like this was possible. I know you think I might turn you away, but I won't. I won't turn you away. I don't know if prison changed you, but I hope you're still a good person. So stay. I'm already finding it difficult to be alone. You're the only relative I have left. So there's a room and you can stay there. Do you have any belongings? Jenny looked at her aunt, tears in her eyes. She didn't even dare hope that she would be offered to stay for good. She nodded and went outside. Her aunt lived in a private house on the outskirts of the city, so Jenny tied her belongings under a lilac bush right by the gate. Her aunt advised her not to be too rash. 
If she were to show up at the social services in her current state, with circles around her eyes, prison jargon, a beastly gaze, and a release certificate, she would likely not receive any help. Sandra was now 17, which meant she would leave the orphanage this year, if she hadn't already. And perhaps things were much worse, perhaps Sandra had already been adopted. But Jenny couldn't even think about that. She got a job, but it was very difficult for her. However, once she started working, she began to look more like a person. After that, she went to the guardianship office and was greeted fairly kindly and listened to. The woman sitting behind the desk sighed, Yes, our director broke many hearts during those years. So many people come, so many tears are shed in this office. And where is she now? She was tried. They did what they could to fix it. But all the parents who were illegally deprived of their children came to court to get them back. Do you think you're the only one who solved the problem this way? And what about the children who were left in the orphanage then? They were sent to different children's homes. In our city, the children's home was overflowing thanks to the director's work. There were no documents indicating where and to whom they were sent. Jenny was given the addresses of 12 children's homes where Sandra could have been sent. Jenny realized she wouldn't make it, she wouldn't get an answer before Sandra left. The woman decided to help her. She said she would make inquiries to the farthest places, but for the nearest ones, Jenny would have to do it herself. Jenny worked and diligently visited children's homes. Replies came to her inquiries, the girl was not in any of the children's homes. When Jenny was already in despair and everyone everywhere said that there was no such child, the woman called and asked Jenny to come. Jenny was very happy, she thought the woman had found out something. And in principle, that's what happened. Only the news was not comforting at all. A repeat response came from one of the children's homes. They had given incorrect information the first time. There had been some confusion. Sandra was adopted six months after she arrived at that children's home. The information about who became Sandra's parents was strictly prohibited from being disclosed. But the head of the institution said that the adoptive parents soon left for another country and nothing more was known about them. In Jenny's office, a hysteria broke out so strong that doctors had to be called. Jenny felt like her life was over. She would never see Sandra again, never. Something inside Jenny had broken. When her aunt died, she decided to move to another city. Somewhere where nothing reminded her of her daughter, of her past life. Jenny retired and realized she could never live on such a small pension. She had little work experience and no real salary. Plus, when she could work, no one would give a former convict a decent job. Jenny had one hobby. She always went to feed the ducks on weekends. Once, when Sandra was very little and Jenny had a little extra money for a couple of loaves of bread, they would go feed the ducks on the promenade every weekend. How long ago that was? So long ago that it seemed unreal. Jenny still came every weekend. She came, fed the noisy flock, and mentally talked to Sandra. She talked and cried. Sandra was late for the parent-teacher conference again. Naturally, no one said a word to her, everyone just smiled sweetly. Since Jenny went to school, Practically from the first grade, she had taken on the expenses of the parent committee. Sandra understood that it was not entirely legal to demand money from parents, but it was done informally. But looking at the walls painted in gray-green was disgusting not only for adults, but also for children. Yes, and the books were such that sometimes pages fell out of them. So Sandra decided that as long as she could, she would help. This was not her school. Sandra studied very far from here. The parent-teacher meeting started with discussing what gifts to buy for the children. Several parents spoke and agreed that the school would only give out candy. Sandra agreed with everyone. She just didn't have the time. Yesterday, she had to fire almost the entire staff at one of her stores because they were stealing almost openly. 
When Darcy returned, she quickly started her own business and things took off. It was simple enough. Her parents had a similar chain of stores in England and all of Sandra's merchandise came from there. She was willing to vouch for the authenticity of any item. Yes, Sandra's stores were not affordable for everyone, but the store with cheap clothing was much bigger, so she focused on quality. Sandra returned 10 years ago and still hadn't been able to find out anything about her mother. After all this time, she remembered everything that happened that day. She remembered how scared she was, how she screamed, how her mother screamed while that man held her. And her mother couldn't break free. She also remembered being carried out of the apartment. Sandra grabbed the clothes on the hanger, the hanger broke, everything fell, and at that moment the girl met eyes with that aunt. That woman was smiling. That's when Sandra vowed to grow up and get revenge on that aunt. After returning to her country and getting back on her feet, Sandra went to her hometown. She wasn't planning on killing anyone, but she really wanted to confront that monster. A stranger opened the door. Sandra nervously explained that she wanted to talk to the woman who lived behind that door. Sandra was dressed nicely, although she did speak with a slight accent. A woman appeared from the depths of the hallway and invited Sandra in. The woman asked if Sandra would like some tea while they talked. Sandra smiled and agreed. We were given this room by the factory five years ago. At the time, some man lived in the second room, and he told us the story of this apartment. Once, about ten or maybe more years ago, a woman with a child lived in the room where we live now. In the second room, another woman lived. The man didn't know exactly what happened, but apparently something happened to the child, and the one who lived next door was responsible. It seemed like the child was taken away from the mother, even though she wasn't a drunk or a bad woman. And then this woman killed her neighbor. Sandra exclaimed, How did she kill her? It can't be. Her mother was so kind, so gentle. She didn't even kill spiders. She always put them on a dustpan and took them outside. And here's this. How bad must it have been for mom to have changed so much in her brain? Tears streamed down Sandra's face and the man handed her a tissue. The girl's mother was imprisoned and the room returned to the ownership of the factory. That's it. As Sandra was leaving, the man slapped his forehead. I completely forgot. A few years ago, almost right after we moved in here, a woman came by. It was the same woman who was the mother of the child. Apparently, she had returned from prison and came to the old address. No, she didn't cause a scene or anything. She just asked if there were any belongings left. And we didn't throw away the clothes and photos. We kept everything, and it turned out to be worth it. Sandra became very concerned. She started asking where the woman went and if they knew anything else about her. But the man shrugged. No, she hasn't shown up again. She just took her things and left. Sandra traveled around that hated town, leaving requests with the police at shelters everywhere she thought her mother could show up. But there were no results, none at all. Sandra seriously believed that if she hadn't gone to the police every day, results might have appeared. But no one wanted to work back then. Then she met Ethan. He was a wonderful man who always supported Sandra in everything. He took on a lot of her work and his help was very noticeable. Sandra just wanted to resume her search for her mother, but then they found out they were going to have a baby. The preparation, the hectic part, Ethan's eyes, the birth, all of this pushed the search back for a few more years. Of course, Sandra occasionally called the police in that town, receiving only routine responses. When Sandra gave birth to her daughter, her husband came to the hospital room. Rather, a bouquet came, and her husband was only slightly visible behind it. Sandra wanted to talk. She really wanted to name her daughter Jenny. Sandra didn't know if she would ever find her mother, but the memory of her should always be with Sandra. 
Ethan knew her entire situation and tried to help and support her. She hoped he would understand. The husband leaned over the daughter. My beauty, Jenny. Sandra looked at him in surprise. He understood everything. He did everything right. Tears flowed from the woman's eyes. She was so lucky. Ethan was so genuine. When Jenny turned five, Sandra decided to visit her hometown again. It was a little easier then because everything could be done with money. Sandra came and openly offered a substantial bribe to the investigator. Two days later, he called her and said he had found her mother's address. Rather, the address where she lived 10 years ago, there was no other information. Sandra immediately called a taxi and headed to that address. She had a plane ticket and she was supposed to fly home that evening. It took some time to find the house and it looked abandoned. Sandra pushed the gate, walked through the yard and saw that the windows were broken and the door was hanging on one hinge. She knocked on the neighbor's door and explained the situation. The woman who came out said, yes, there was an old lady living here and a woman with her. The woman was a relative and lived with her all her life. After the old lady died, the woman left almost immediately, saying she was going to another city and we don't know anything about her. She didn't talk to anyone. Sandra cried all the way to the airport. She realized that there were no leads, nothing. She would never be able to find her mother. Her mother had been through so much and now she faced old age alone. Did she have anything to eat? Was she sick? Maybe she needed help? Jenny was looking for some part-time work. Yes, she was very old, but she was still able to clean floors and dust. She wasn't always treated kindly. No wonder, an old lady in a very old coat offering her services. Jenny understood that she had no chance of finding a job that she could handle but she persisted and tried to visit small shops. In front of her was a small shop sparkling with lights. It was small, but apparently wealthy. Because wealth was evident in everything decorated steps, lots of garlands. Soon it would be New Year's Eve and everything in this shop was decorated. Jenny thought that a shop owner who didn't spare money for the holiday shouldn't be mean. She took a deep breath and pushed the door. If it didn't work out, she could at least warm up. It was very cold outside. She entered. So beautiful. Such things. Such beautiful women. She walked around the shop and saw one of the saleswomen calling a man and pointing at the old lady who was walking between the rows of clothes. The man approached her. Grandma, we have nothing for you in our store. Please leave the store. Sonny, why are you scolding me right away? Maybe you have. She didn't finish saying that she was looking for a job, that she could mop floors or take out the trash. The man grabbed her hand tightly and led her to the door. The old woman was in pain, but she still tried to say something to him. But the young man wasn't listening, he repeated. I told you, you have no business here. We don't serve. We're not a charity organization. The manager opened the door and pushed the old woman onto the porch. She couldn't keep her balance, slipped on the last step, and fell in the snow. The manager didn't see this. The old woman started to get up. It was slippery and she couldn't manage it. Suddenly, someone's hands lifted her up. Grandma, hold on to me. A very young girl looked at her with such kind eyes. Thank you, my dear, thank you. The grandmother spoke, tears streaming down her face. So this is how it ends. Now she's being chased away from everywhere like a bum. The manager looked out the window. A bright red car was pulling into the parking lot. Girls, hurry up and gather everything. Sandra's here. Everyone rushed around. The owner, though fair, was hot-headed. She could make such a scene that it would be unbelievable. The manager knew they had five to ten minutes. Sandra was always on the phone. 
Usually, when she arrived at the store, she talked for another five minutes and then went in. Although, the girls thought that she just gave them time to quickly fix any mistakes. Sandra got out of the car and looked around. While she was talking to her mother, Jenny had already run ahead, as always. Sandra smiled, what a restless child. She was already 15, but still hopped around like she was in first grade. She headed towards her store and proudly noticed that it looked more decorated than all the others. Well done, staff. The girls did a great job. She frowned a little when she remembered the manager. He reminded her of the supervisor from old movies, always slick back, always staring into your eyes. Like a faithful dog. She couldn't stand him, but as an employee, he was excellent. Everything was always in order with him. Sandra noticed her daughter's bright jacket. She was shaking snow off an old lady near the store's porch. Apparently, the grandmother fell and Jenny helped her. Good job, daughter. Sandra was most afraid that her daughter would waste her money. Apparently, it was unnecessary. She approached, Jenny, what's going on here? Mom, guess what? Your manager pushed the old lady so hard that she even fell. Sandra was furious. What kind of person is he? After all, he himself came from a poor family with many children. No one knew about it except for Sandra. And he constantly behaved like a king. Literally, two months ago, there was a similar incident. A woman came, dressed very poorly. She had been saving money for a year to buy a dress for her daughter's prom, and he almost fired her. Fortunately, at that moment Sandra arrived. He begged her not to fire him. She believed that he wouldn't do it again, but here it is, happening again. She was about to enter the store, but then she heard the old lady say to her daughter, My name is also Jenny, just like yours. Grandma, do you have anyone? Let me call someone for you. Sandra was on the last step when she heard the old lady's answer and froze. I had a daughter named Sandra, but I lost her a long time ago. No need, my dear, I'll go slowly. Thank you. Sandra turned around, looked at the old lady. Mom? Her daughter looked at her in surprise, then looked at the old lady and covered her mouth with her hand to keep from screaming. Sandra descended one step. She did not take her eyes off the old lady. And the old lady, as if she were petrified. Mom? The old lady slowly raised her eyes to the girl's mother. Sandra, she grabbed her chest and began to fall slowly, but the girl and her mother managed to catch her. Mom, no, not now. Do you hear me? I've been looking for you for so many years. The old lady stroked Sandra's face. Don't cry, don't cry, my dear daughter, everything is all right. My head just spun a little. Sandra looked at Jenna. Call dad, explain everything, let him come home urgently. We'll be there soon. And let him bring our doctor. Jenna nodded her head, supporting the old lady with one hand while dialing her father with the other. Mom, can you walk? Here, my car. Jenna looked at the car, beautiful. Then she turned to her daughter. It was hard for her to speak, tears rolling down her cheeks. You're so beautiful, Sandra. I knew you could do it. Forgive me, I couldn't hold back then. And if I had, maybe we wouldn't have been separated for so many years. Let's talk about it later. About everything later, we have so much to tell each other. But for now, let's go home. The manager didn't understand why Sandra was taking so long. He approached the window and his palms were sweating. Sandra was helping the old lady into her car, whom he had recently kicked out of the store. That's a twist. What's going to happen now? Sandra will definitely fire him. But how could he have known that the old lady in the patched coat was familiar with their boss? He needs to come up with something believable. He can't afford to lose this job. 
Otherwise, he'll have to go back to his family. But here, they paid so much that he could afford to rent a decent apartment and live. He didn't notice that the pencil he was twirling in his hands had broken into several pieces. The girl next to him, adjusting her clothes, heard the sound, looked at the manager, then out the window. She understood everything, smiled. The girls didn't like this man very much, and if the boss finally fired him, they would be happy about it. The red car pulled out of the parking lot with three tearful women inside. Two of them continued to cry, but at the same time, they were all happy. Jenny was going home with her family. What a wonderful word home. 